Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaza. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are... Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Well, John. The lo- a nice little treat you've got there. The lovely people over at Warlord. They've gone done sent us a review copy. Mm. So this is ABC Warriors, which is their latest offering from their Rebellion license, which is the 2000 AD... George Dredd, Strontium Dog, yeah, Slain. Leaning into that, aren't they? They're yeah, because these, these are a bit more niche. I mean, I'm going to be brutally honest with you now. I know almost nothing about the ABC Warriors. I know there was one in the 1995 film. Right, in the Judge Dredd movie, yeah. and he just says, like, we are the ABC Warriors and then or something. Hit someone in the face, and that's it. But it is a kind of classic comic type. There's an there's a arc villain. Yes. There's good robots and there's bad robots and they're leftover war bots from a from a from an, a forgotten war or something. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, yeah, they are relics something of something like there's be people be screaming at us yeah, now. Yeah, you fools! So this the very latest. I think this is either out now or out extremely soon. Mm. Do you want to tell them what's in the box, John? And then we will Air am I. unwrap it. For Do you know what? Pleasure. That's actually quite weighty. It's not the biggest box, but it's no. it's swole. I think it's a rule book. Uh, well, well it. it's got 124 pages, that's why. It's there a softback rule book. You get a quick start scenario booklet. Interested nice. in that. You get Hammerstein and three Hammerstein Mark 1s, which are ABC Warriors. Yeah, ABC they're the ABC, well, they're the good guys, right? Interestingly, they're Warlord Resin. They are in, or if you know from other companies, it's CEO cast. Yes. Uh, you get Vulcan Icon of Icons and three Vulcan AK-47. Uh, they're bad guys, like, I think. Bad, well, bad robots. Bad guys. Uh, you never know. 36 card tarot deck. So it's card tarot gonna, deck. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Four character and auxiliary cards. Eight 2000 AD dice. Two six sided spot die. Interesting. Vulcan's altar, which is a piece of MDF scenery. So you do get terrain in the set. You do, get, you do get piece of terrain in the set. Yeah, uh, so you get the rest activation of chips, tokens, objective markers, graffiti decal sheet. Yoink. Um, and some plastic bases. So there's a lot to read there, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let, let's open it up. So first of all, it's a, it's a top opener, so we can show you what you are confronted with. And these wrappers tell me this is this is Sciocast. Yeah, this yeah. is Warlord Resin, right? Gosh. All right. So we, should we put them to want take them out? Yep. And, and we'll Miniatures. look at them individually in a minute. Let's see what's underneath. Let's see what they're like. We just show you the contents. Ah! So we've that's got some, the deck of cards, right? This is the deck of cards. Now it's a tarot, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't tarot. know. I mean, that must is it somehow tarot or is it connect just... with the story, or is that what it's called? Uh, Ace of Sword, Death, the Tower, the Lover. Oh, I it think, is. I think it is a, a tarot deck, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether you have metal fatigue in the tarot, so whether it's. I wonder what's the connection. Acid under armor is definitely not a na- normal tarot. No, card. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's obviously themed in some way. I don't know, but those are the cards. Now these are nice. They the, look like quality. They, they're they got cards for. They're bigger than playing cards. They're longer. The text is really clear on them. The art is stylistically nice. I like the cards. I've got to say, I nice. like the cards a lot. Good. What relevance they have in the game? Do not know. No, but, but we uh, might know more when we have a look at the rule book. You uh, you, there, there's those character cards that we were talking about. Right. Uh, so, is it like a big faction card and then a small character card or something like that? I have a sneaky suspicion. Because there's maybe. a couple. Of, there's a couple of cards in there. Oh God! Somehow it's open. Have a go. It's all right. It's all right. It was. This was packed by Maria, not Mirella. The new warlord little cup with the Should washing instructions oh, on the yes, back. Oh yes, yeah. Do not, do not resume. swallow. Uh, do not subject to great heat. So what we got? Hammerstein Mark One. Yeah. So this so is a unit card. Deck. ABC Warriors Volgan AK forty seven. And then this. So these hero cards. Yes. Yeah. The big ones are hero cards. I mean, they've got a very distinctive look. This Volcan guy. He's all about the hammer, right? Hammer and sickle, sir. Hammer, hammer and sickle. sickle. I mean, I don't know where I've seen that iconography before, do you? Hammer and sickle. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Into war, maybe, or something like that? <laughs> We're well, definitely <laughs> in that. Definitely in that. Right, now, can you... What do you think about the the text on those cards? Regards size and legibility. Is that a problem for you? I've got to say, that's not that easy to read. Okay, cool. Um, yes, on this one. On the larger card, it seems to work. And I think it's because there's a combination. 
it, there's like mottled background to it as well. It does seem cars. to have sort of a bit of the, the cartoon strip, the cartoon, the comic strip behind the card there. Yes. Which is lovely, it's great, but I'm like, I'm looking at it and it looks a bit like, you know when you see 3D writing? Yeah, yeah, it's like it's the a text, bit like that. The, the, it the, might just be my eyesight, I am wearing glasses. printing is crisp, but it's still difficult to read, and that's always the problem when you write over the top of a picture. Yes, that, that's that's sort kind of distracts your eyeball. Yeah, okay. and I think because of the size of it. But it's workable. This, it's got all the on this it works fine. But these have got white backgrounds. They're just a bit. They're just a bit clearer on this one. Clearer laid out. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't factored that in. And of course, you have got your stats down the side. Right. Anyway, uh, dice. Up next, which is cool. Two thousand AD dice plus your little dice. Your little D six. Yeah. So the, there must be times when you need to ge generate a number between another, one yeah. and six or whatever. Quality. They're giving you a pair. I've never actually had these But before. they've got their 2000 AD proprietary dice. And these work because this, assuming that this is broadly the same as Judge Dredd, Strong Team, etc. I believe so, yeah. It's opposed dice rolling. I roll a number of dice looking for some of the pictures for positive results. So, like, just looking at these, hits I think the shooting... And there's, yeah, there's hits and defence. And, and defence is less likely. There's maybe two defence... And then there's a 2000 exactly AD, which is some which sort is, of wild. Which should be a wild card or a fail for other circumstances. Sweet. So it just, I mean, a proprietary dice like this, it just puts a table onto a dice. Ultimately, yeah. Yeah, that's what, is what it's done, uh, which is interesting. Now, this ad, you probably like yeah, this. Yeah, this is John. cool. So this is just, because um, I love doing little bits of terrain and whatnot. And yeah. this is 2000 AD crazy, what's it called? Graffiti, which is really cool. And no doubt there's slogans on here, which if you've read <laughs> the comic strip would make a lot more sense. So what have we got? Uh, bile. Bile, which I'm guessing is a brand of oil that they use to lube up the old ABC oh, right. warriors, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Make waste, not war. Make waste, not war. <laughs> don't talk. No, talk. Don't talk. All right. Because it's that sort of crazy land. Oh, it's the light you on, get off, told. light off. Yeah, you get talk, told don't when talk. you can talk. So like, like, cool. like, like walk, don't walk. Exactly that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so right. that's really sweet. Now that, I really like that because they've commissioned that and that's going to lift the otherwise. Because their scenery, yes. the same with the Stronti Dog, it's kind of apocalypse wasteland type scenery. Yes. It's quite grubby and brown. And this so putting, it... putting a splash of colour on and to freehand that stuff, even the most accomplished model painters in the world, some of them we just can't, I certainly can't. If I try and freehand something, it looks no. awful. Some... <laughs> 50% of the time, it works every time mm. for me. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, this so is just paste. Uh, and they're paste. just going to contextualise those things. I really like a decal on a bit of scenery where it's relevant. I think it, I think it brings it to life. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. That's that's a nice little addition there. Uh, right. You've got some bases in there. Now, assuming that that's all the bases you need, I count five here. So and there they're 40 one mil rounds. They're at least 40 mil rounds. Because I think these are because these boys. are warbots. They're bigger, bigger robots. Uh, here's your tokens. 3D tokens for various aspects of the game. Yeah. So status markers, wounds. The way the chits work in this, assuming again, assuming it's the same as the other. There's some of these have got stars on, and some of them haven't. Oh yeah. On these. So instead of using a ball action dice that you draw from a bag, you use these little. You put tokens in for each each guy, and then a certain number of hero ones, depending on the capabilities of the heroes you have. Right. Yeah. And the heroes ones have a chance to go back in the bag as well. So you, the, your heroes it's really are heroes. Yeah, much more so than in like a war game. Your heroes are going to get to activate several times as well as doing a lot more when they do, which is good. And it, and it makes it a lot more random. And I, I, especially in a skirmish game, I like swingy games. I like uncertainty because I think it makes a lighthearted game more swing. Yeah. I mean, there's times when you want to play a serious game. You know, if you've if you've got two thousand Napoleonic miniatures and you're trying to refight Waterloo, you don't want that to be swinging. You no. put too much into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but if you're just playing that. a game with five miniatures with one of the guys down the club, they're freaking robots, man. That just ja ja yeah, large robots bashing each other. <laughs> I think you want swingy. I think you want randomness. But you have got that. Um, bolt action. I don't know whether I'm going to go next or not. Which I enjoy. And with which, and more so because the heroes. I can't use one of these regular tokens to move my hero. Yes. So that my hero may get to go more than once. He didn't necessarily get to go when I next draw a chip. When you want him to, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So again, that's that's quite an interesting thing. Nice. Uh, looks like a majority of the box was packed by our favourite Morella. So the overall. Yeah, I think Morella does the master assembly, yeah, doesn't course. she? Right. So this is a little. 
Increase the peace, ABC Warriors. Quick start booklet. Quick start booklet. Can we show them the quick innards? Start? Yeah, certainly can. Mm -hmm. There's one page of the innards. Um, mm. Interesting. So it seems to... I'll put this here so you can have a rough look as well. Mm. Um, start sort of with scenarios. How quick start is this? I'm not sure. Uh, scenario, scenario one, creating a platform. So it lays out the board, puts them on the thing. I turn over what I'm looking for, a second scenario. So I don't know how much of a quick start this but is. But I can see just at a glance here, yeah. look. It says tarot cards, mission no tarot one, cards. no tarot cards. Then here, tells you which one to use. And then they're giving you more information. Okay. So it is scaffolding a little yeah. bit. In conjunction with, obviously, the rule book. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, and it's nice that it's got a paint of miniatures across the bottom. Yes. I love a quick start guide in a start set. Yeah, because it's a start set, right? So because it's you want to get set. into the action as soon as you possibly yes. can. Yeah. Now, what I will say about this quick start guide is it's not got rules in it. It's just scena it's scenarios. No, it does, however, have the or a um, reference sheet. sheet on the back. Right, that's good as well. Good and it, place to that's look at it. nice. It lays out some of the rules and it also tells you the page number that it's on. Page reference with that's rules. That's a big thing. So important. You so did important. good. You did good you there. You did good there. And it means you've got a second set of those because when you're playing for the first time with another guy, you've got one set. Mm. You've got that the back of that to look at the rule summary. I've got the book. So between us, we can and both we can look. Fudge it together. I just found some more bases, so... So there will be some smaller robots. Yeah. Well, we're probably near the bottom of the box now. Unfortunately, this, yes. This or seems to be... We haven't, we haven't yet looked at the minis, but these are the heavy things. Yes. El Buco. El Buco. quite nice. Now, you're the bookman, so... I'm the bookman. You... Okay, so first of all, it's got that lovely photographic paper, classinogenic... I want that from, I want my new book experience to feel slightly Minimum boxy. experience of a rule book is that lovely smell. Now, interesting. You feel, feel the paper, John? There's almost like a... There's a there's, texture there's there. There's a texture. It almost feels that, like dust. It feels more like dust. It's not, it's not to all the pages. It was maybe just to certain ones. That's, in, that's interesting. But in terms of the production values, it's it's very strong. It's very it's colourful. Lovely. Yeah. It's very modern looking. It's nicely laid out. Um, there's a lot of art in this book, just from the little look. There's a lot of, of full colour spreads. So they're really... I'm assuming that this is all original art. They're not commissioned this. I'm not they're, sure. I, I don't know how much art they commissioned. If that is all commissioned art, then that's some money spent, surely. <laughs> yes, but it is a very established IP. True. Um, so I suspect. But these don't, they're not in the comic book style. No, so I don't know if that's a new thing. Like, I, I, I don't know the evolution of 2080 as a comic, so I don't know if... if oh, they are now like producing is, yeah, more, that may be. more like digitised yeah, images that may be the case. type thing. Um, but yeah, in terms of the layout, it looks it looks okay. I I, I love to get, to get that sense of feel for the game. I really want the pictures to put me in the place, mm -hmm. and this definitely does this. This looks quite grim and got robots everywhere. Now, big question. Oh, does it have it? It does. Index. Index at the back. Bosh. Fantastic. Can't find the rule. I'll look it up. What about the front end. Contents. Nicely laid out contents nice. page. Now, what I will say is what it describes as the core rules runs from page 8 through to, thir to, through to 41. So there's quite a lot of rules. However, the text on page is like a lot of page, a lot there's of, a space, plenty of space in there to is scribble. allocated. It also seems to have, just at glance, it's not blended with fluff. Okay, so it's concise. This is the fight rule. This is the shake right. it off Good. rule. Um, there's sidebars here and there for special segments, like using multiple Little guns. Tip bits on there. Tip sort squares. Of, sort of clarifying diagrams showing you how things work. Other models and this giant spider type Spoiler. thing. Looks great. So yeah, although it looks like there's kind of 30 pages of rules, there's not a lot of text. And it's including things like dismounting from vehicles. You know, there's... There's stuff in here we're not going to need. Until much later on. Until, until much gaming. later. Because I think they do make resin scenery. I've seen some they of do, the Judge yeah, Red stuff. Definitely, yeah. They've got tanks, definitely, and, bikes they got and, tanks all and all sorts of things. But just like scenic, just like 
civilian vehicles. Again, we don't know, but I'm, I'm assuming this is very similar to a lot of the other 2000 AD in the game. I, I think so. I'm going to have a bit of a look dice. once we finish yeah, this to see how to let you know it is. Yeah. One more thing. Oh, yeah. One Big more thing, thing in the box. Sarissa Precision. The That's the end of it. There is a picture on the back. Uh, stop and zoom in. Don't do that. Um, it is ABC Warriors gantry platform. So that would suggest that they've had this specifically made. Yeah, I think that they've done that for a few other things. I think the stuff that they had for Stronty Dog was commissioned that as was well. Cool. It was like specifically for it. Nice. Yeah, um, so they seem to have all their um, epic stuff comes with Sarissa scenery as well. Yes, and I does, think yeah. that that's new. I think you can buy it from Sarissa as but well. But but that relationship as well, like the two yeah, that's, things. That's not a bad thing. Now this is about a foot long. Yeah, best part of it. And this is a game that's kind of three by three okay. type size yeah. with with you know six six miniatures a side max, I think. So that's a substantial bit of scenery. I think it is supposed to be the kind of podium upon which the bad guy stands with his anvil when he's, you know, addressing the, yeah, the evil ones. Yeah, interestingly, there seems to be three different, possibly more configurations. Is that Unless you get three separate ones. I don't know. Mm, no, they're the same bits. Different, different configurations order. of the stairs. Yeah. So the stairs yeah, are separate. Are. Yeah. And you can change it and yeah. move it around. So you can That's have the cool. stairs at the side or the stairs in front of the platform. Uh, but it's got four sheets of MDF. Um, yeah. The same with Stranty Dog. So if you bought the other ones, you've got several different pieces of MDF scenery that, that are quite be relevant to substantial each other. that work within that apocalyptic type setting. I don't know what came with the Judge Dread one. And the, actually, the slain one was the was the like uh, Watland Dog houses with thatch oh, roofs, yeah. so they're not suitable. <laughs> um, but definitely the Stronty Dog one is if you've got that. So, uh, but I again, I love a bit of scenery in a start set. I'm, oh, I, I'm like I often say this. I the, appreciate it because it allows you to contextualise the game, mm -hmm. especially when it's got its own kind of theme. Just even just a little bit of scenery on top of what you already have in your collection is going to make it feel more like you're in the setting. Yeah, for sure. You know, so I'm I'm really glad to see this, and it's going to paint up very easy because it's supposed to be like a grubby metal bit of thing. So yes, you, you, you don't paint need to it black. About you, it that much. you overbrush it brown with a bit of few metallic streaks here and there. You can go to town on it, but that will give you a good yeah, result. Yeah, you've got I've a painted a lot of, of scenery like that for forty k, <laughs> and it works. And it, and it and it works quite well, I think. I think yeah. so. All right, so that's that's the main stuff. Without looking at the minis, so shall we have a shall we have a peek at the yes. minis? Yes, we are back. Uh, Jay Bisler has used the knife. Didn't cut himself. I didn't even use a knife in the end. I just you un un well, you get one. them, but I did get one just in All case. Right. Should you have a look at what there is? Yes, we please. don't know a lot about these models, but we can tell you what we think, that, you know, in terms of quality I'm and stuff. Use, well. Yeah, I'm just going to start with the basic dudes of the good guys, which is the Hammerstein Mark 1s here. The Hammerstein Mark 1s. Are you really? sure they're not the bad guys? No, they're the good guys because, you know, you've got Hammerstein, he's the god dude. Hammerstein the is dude. the good guy. Well, unless you think and Vulcan, Vulcan with the hammer the, and sickle yeah, is yeah. the well, Stalin guy. So, I'm going to pour them out. Your three grunt dudes. These are your three basic Hammerstein ABC Warriors. Okay. They've got tracked feet. <laughs> they have got tracked feet. They have an actual They're hammer. They're very 2000 AD. They've got a hammer. Um, They've got ABC on the front and knee pad. They do have component pieces. They're not one piece models. So you do have to stick the arms on and the heads, which are all slightly different, which is nice. There's a bit of character. Which is there. nice. Um, pose wise. Disco there's dancers. One, there's one radically different pose and two that are quite similar. The oh, yeah. feet are different, but the body and arm is in the same kind of place. That's a very good observation. The feet, of, the feet are very different. This one's actually quite twisted. Mm. Um, so, and the fact that the heads are different, that, that's nice. That's nice. A bit of variety there. Yeah, and they're, they're pretty clean looking casts. I mean... They're, quite, they're pretty deep cuts in these, but there's also some really shallow ones with the panel details on the on the thigh and so forth. That's pretty you could, good. You couldn't do that in metal, I don't think. I don't think you'd see it. Mm, you could, but you'd end up scraping it off, most probably, thinking it's a flashlight. Yeah, thinking line. it's a flashlight or something, yeah. And these are clean. 
The, 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 there doesn't seem to be the sheen of the film that you'd normally see on a release agent, but I'd still, yeah, I'd still give them a little what's yeah. it, and you mean clean in the sense that there's no real, yeah, mold marks. But in in a metal one, I don't think you'd get the legs like this. They're in really interesting because they're robots. They can kind of art, they can articulate, they yeah. can twist they can spin in very different appendage. ways, and and certainly the legs on this one, they they're not kind of straight. They they. They're slightly twisted at the different, but deliberately. Yeah, you know, and I think that that's good to see because it's in it. We understand, it, and not it's not just that the medium lets us do it, but what we are trying to replicate can do things men can't do, yes. and we want to show yeah. that in the. We sculpts. can spin that round. I can confirm after thumbing it for a few moments that it's not bendy resin, so that's it's certainly a lot better. They changed. So their, they move. They changed the formula. Their yes. early formula stuff was, was very, very bendy. bendy. E, but probably too bendy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really tough one. It's like, oh, that's too bendy. So, well, we make it more firmer and then it becomes more brittle. That's, the, yeah. You know, where's the, the line on that? What's, what's they what? definitely move to a, to a firm one. I mean, this is definitely, it, oh, I'm certain this is CO cast, but it feels much more like no, resin, but without the weight. Cast. Yeah. It doesn't have the weight of traditional resin. But it, these are nice and clean. I like these. This is just the first bag. Yeah, sorry, so guys. So, this is um, the three. They're uh, your three Hammerstein Mark good guy ones. grunts. They're, they're your grunty dudes. I'm going to get the opposition give me the bag. I'll put them, yes, I'll put them back. Um, and I think, what, what, do you, what do you reckon? You. The contrast paint, because the level, of, the level of, I think that this is going to come out real well. Because yeah. of the number of panels. Yeah. There's a lot for be... it to work with. Or army paint the speed pants. Or Any similar. Yeah, what's the Vallejo other big one? Vallejo Express. I need to get me some of that because I'm not I've trying not it. tried the Express and Almost all my paints are Vallejo, but I... not tried the Express range. Because I've bought speed pants. Yeah, true. I bought speed all pants. All good. Yeah. Right, this is the opposition grunts. These the, okay. Which are called Volgan AK-47s. Interesting. Right, and these are lighter. Oh, oh these Whoa. are stylistically very different. Certainly more rounded. Yeah. I'm noticing there. They've got smoother, uh, not, they've got rounder edges. They're less, armor they're less they're not blocky. They're, they're slightly less man. They've got legs like me. Uh, they, and they've got a big, big gold star on the shoulder as well. I mean, they're really leaning into the yeah. side. I think that's one that of the things about the 2000 AD license, isn't it? It's kind of unashamedly, you know, nudging at these. Not, It's not nudging. It's pointing at these things. Like, look, we're making fun of that. Yeah. Cold right, war in, this. In, our, in our future, absolutely. Uh, guns, nice. Got little uh, combat attachments. Again, you, there is some assembly required to these. Yeah. You can't just pluck them and out. And you're gonna have to CA or super glue these. It, True this fact. stuff does not work with with plastic glue, yeah. yep. uh, poly cement stuff, because the the material it's adhering to it's not the same stuff. Have we got a choice of six heads? Does that mean there's three more of Loads these somewhere of else? There is not three more of these anywhere else. But for if well, you got six get heads. another set or add more, you've got six very different heads, stylistically. Uh, mm, actually, mm, three are similar. Yeah. They, they're crazy. I love them. They've all got crazy mouths. I, I love how different they look. Yeah. I mean, I, and we're, it's hard to credit Warlock for this because they're just going with what they're, yeah. what they're making models of the things from, from the comic, right? But they definitely... They look like they're a product of the same technology, but definitely built by a different faction. The, the ABC one is very blocky, very kind of almost like Captain America type as a robot. Well, they're like Sherman tanks, aren't they? <laughs> and these are like friggin' the other ones. <laughs> the the IS-2s or are whatever. These are thinner, more round. They look more like a man in a robot suit. <laughs> well, that, yeah. There is that you know, too. in terms of the bodies. But nice, but much bigger looking guns. And Certainly even the guns longer. are slightly different. Yeah. So this is again, I think, some of the advantages of the CO cast. The better stuff around the CO cast is he's saying we can do things a bit differently. He's saying it's not bendy, but these no, these it's not that these, bendy. these bayonets are actually a lot tougher. They need a little bit of clean up there. And that's the first thing I've seen that really needed some clean. And that's pretty basic. And that's a it? simple snip. Very basic. Heads look great. I like the fact you get six heads there. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming, I was trying to find out which bit on this was a points cost. I'm assuming, because it's, it's a comic strip. Notoriety, or whatever, however you say it. 
There seems to right. be there. all rep you see there. So I think these yeah. are seven points a model. These are 11. But you know how it works in kind of comics, Because yeah, the heroes get through a lot of grunts. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. The bad guy ones are going to be cheaper. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the bad Yeah, because they're the background they're gonna get, goons. Yeah, right? they're going to get weirded through, right? Exactly. There's going to be a whole bunch of them. Exactly. Even if you're going to get three in this set, you probably like... And they do seem to have a different notoriety. Yes. Yeah. And they're just the goons. That's the that's, that's your three the, goons, that's, that's and they're led by sides. quite stylized characters. Yep. So let's start off with Sergeant Hammerstein. Sergeant Hammerstein, he sounds like an all-American. So, he just looks like a massive one of those. He's <laughs> massive. Uh, he's oh. got two head options. He's got optional head. Oh, that looks more like a face with a breathing apparatus. So one looks like the proper ABC. Oh, it looks like Frankenstein, actually. He's got a proper flat top. And the other one looks more like, I don't know, a Transformer. I'm sure there's a reason for that. Maybe one's a more traditional ABC warrior head. Um, arms again. Is it just the just the left arm that's separate? Left arm. Seems to be two sorts options. of additional attachments. So one's like a, a buzz saw for somewhere. Might actually. Are there, are there waist attachments? No, yeah. I, I think they're waist. Oh right, there's, there's little, a separate little. There's little his plugs picture? here. Idiot. Yeah, he's got yeah, waist. There you go. He's got waist gun. He's got mini arms coming out of his abs. Sweet. Yeah. That's cool. Really that nice. makes me a bit nervous in terms of them going in, because that hole doesn't look that deep. You might need to do a bit of drilling here. I mean, wh yeah. when I come to build this, I think that I will try and drill, I will try and get Possible you pinning. to pin that. Yeah. Well, just look at the depth of the it socket. Might be difficult. I think once you clean that out, now there is a little bit of flash on this model. So you've got yep. a little sort of slither of uh, filament resin in the socket, which has given it a lack of depth. Oh, is that at. what you think it is? Yeah, oh, I yeah, think it the is. light's catching it and it's making it out. I think yes, it's quite, I, th I think you're right looking at it again. It is quite deep. Um, the ball joints look pretty good on these. Yeah. But I am noticing... On and the, they're not heavy. On they're the, not metal. No. No, so you don't need to worry about the weight of it. About the weight of it pulling it down. There is a little bit of a sort of seep here on this section, but that's not, it's not deterring from... But the yeah. actual piece, no. other than the ball socket on this, will need a little bit more clean up because it's gotta, got yeah. a bit of seepage. It's got but a bit nothing of seepage. major, nothing that you can't deal with with a bit of it's, modeling it's skill. It's thinner than it's paper. Nothing, yeah. it, it, lo it looks like a big lump of plastic. It's if that was metal, you might have problems. <laughs> yeah, but that that is that is not. It's very thin. That yeah, that's good. So yeah. Go. Okay, so he's, he's a nice one, and he, he definitely looks like the leader of those because he's just twice the man they are, as it were. Uh, <laughs> as it's always. the same. The same, same kind model. of the same, yeah. It's just like a big version of those guys. Maybe it's just with closer. those waste weapons. That definitely looks like a. There face. must be a reason behind that. Perhaps there is. Uh, if if we can get a picture up of the different heads or whatever, one looks like a. It looks like the ABC Warrior head from said ninety five. From from the that film. Digit, the, one the of them really is blocky head, yeah. blocky chaw. Yeah. Whereas the other ones. Are but you reckon more. that's quite Necron like if you're into your Warhammer? Yeah. As a comparison, that, yeah. That standard Necron. There's a frame of reference. Whereas the other one looks more like a face oh with breathing God. equipment. They're really leaning into this. So the bad guy, hammer and sickle. Yeah, but there's more. But than there's that, more. Mate. There's a massive anvil. That's beautiful. That must be like I don't know. Maybe that's an objective marker. Because it says that's some sort of platform for him to be yes. striking so when or I, something. When you read out the box stuff, I was worried when you said like MDF anvil shrine or something. I was very much worried that the anvil itself was, was going to be made crazy. out of MDF. Yeah. And it's not. That is a big old wadja cast. That's part of Vulcan's altar, yeah. have you know. So this is the altar, which I thought that might, that might be what this was called. Mm -hmm. But this anvil... And I, I, I think he carries this around with him. Drags it along. I'm surprised the bottom isn't tracked, you know, like... Oh, right, off. so I can literally follow him along. Yeah, moves along. Yeah. Lovely big miniature. And it's interesting, it doesn't... It sounds quite loud, but it isn't It isn't very heavy. I want to poke it and see if... It isn't going to get damaged. It looks like an anvil. I mean, that... That's great. And I'm not sure you'd... <laughs> you'd, you'd you know, if this was a plastic kit or something, you wouldn't get that. No. You don't want to build that. No, in its uh, component pieces. That's lovely. Yeah. What a cool little gimmick. Ah, get off. It is. Here's yeah. the, here's it's the main It's not very bag. transferable because it's got very distinctive iconography mm. on the front, which isn't Soviet, it's Soviet-esque. Soviet-esque, indeed. Sorry, size comparison with uh, Captain Hammerstein. Right. I think that's around 54 mil. So these are... 
Uh, regards to the height of the miniature. Regards yeah. to the height of the miniature. I mean, there's, he's a, he feels he's a little got, bit smaller, but that's because he's not got a head on. He's got a head on. He's got a head on, and this so it looks tall. But they're they're about two inches tall. He's got a massive commissar great coat on. And he's an got onion a crazy dome hat. onion dome hat. <laughs> yeah, mate. It's like it's like what are these iconic Russian things <laughs> that we can just make the fool of? Power hammer, huge and the giant hammer and sickle. sickle. Wow. Right. So probably the last thing to say. I mean, conscious. We want to get this review out before large numbers of you. I think we're assuming that a number of people that might be interested in the Judge Dread license interested in this. So we didn't yeah. want to like if we like painted the miniatures, built the scene, and all that. You'd be waiting another month or two before you got to see it. We did consider that. <laughs> However, now knowing that there's different the, pieces and there's more work than I think yeah, is, uh, would absolutely, from that. Absolutely. What we did do is we had a quick glance at the rules, though. You can tell a lot, can't you, by you, a systems combat? You can, right, so you can tell a lot about a game from a systems combat, from its quick start guide and so forth. I can't tell you everything about this game. I've played a couple of the others in the Rebellion sequence. I've had a bit of a goal with Stronty Dog. I played the um, the zombie game, which is very, very similar in terms of the way the dice mechanics work. Yes. Is it Project Z? The, yes. Project Zomboid? Yes, it is. It's Project Zomboid would have been a much better name for it, guys. It's some, I, think it's, I think it's, it's Project Z, yeah. 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 That uses very sim a very similar kind of a pose dice mechanic as well. Right. And actually, what's interesting is the uh, pose dice rolling is different to reflect the fact that they're giant robots. That was really funny. Kaiser was just reading out a few of the things, and uh, there's two types in Two types game. of target. You've got robots and floppies, uh, which are, as far as we can tell, people, human people. <laughs> From the robots' perspective. It was hilarious trying to figure out what a floppy was. <laughs> and, and, that, and that's the great, it, you know, even if you don't know the Judge Dredd and 2000 yes. AD type series, by getting one of these games and looking at it, the people who've developed this game really know and love those things. And it's soaked in that kind of language and it's tried to really bring that yeah, out. Yeah, I like that. Like, you know, like, I don't know what the deal with the tarot thing is, but I'm sure it, they wouldn't call it tarot if that wasn't part of the law of, it, exactly of this. Because yeah. they're clearly, some of them look like tarot card names, like classic ones, but others are obviously like acid or no, metal or whatever. No, I'm pretty sure that is a standard. I think that's yeah. just a name for the, the cards. <laughs> But that somehow fits with the story. Same with its characters. And I think even if you don't know the franchise particularly well, mm. you could grow to enjoy it. Because we just enjoyed reading some of yeah, the that words. Was funny. Yeah, yeah. It makes you want fun. to look a bit further into it. Right. So in terms combat. of in terms of the combat, we learned was um and it took it took me a while, even though there's only like three pages on the shooting, to understand because they have these two different target types, it works yeah, that, slightly different. Throw a spanner in there. But Man, man, this is a game that you're going to play four models aside to start with. Yes. You three goons and your hero. Yeah. And like any good skirmish game, you need to not just sort of lose half your models in the first round of shooting. That would be horrific. And there needs to be a bit more, in most cases, a bit more interaction. It's not like I roll to hit and see if you're dead. You need to take part in that, It would right? be nice. Right. It's such a small, zoomed-in yeah. game. Yeah, for sure. So in terms of using a proprietary dice, the shooter makes a shooting number. Makes a hit roll. That's right. And then if they hit, and this is where the two target types, floppies get pinned, robots get metal fatigue. <laughs> Which is very much like a bolt action mechanic. Yes, it's, it's like a pin thing. mechanic. Yeah. But they work those two things work differently. Yes. The metal fatigue thing is just a, it's just a pile of tokens on the robot that build up that you can cash in to increase the power of your attack in That's terms right. of doing damage. Yeah. So it's like dints and nicks and so forth in the robot. So if you've got a whole bunch of weapons that are not likely to actually do damage outright, you can save, you can stack them up. You can and plink try them and, in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, like I think there are limits. And uh, the defender, if he's got some of these in his own turn, can try and remove them. So, so again, it works a bit like pins, whereas it doesn't work the same as pins. Mm. Because it just uh, means you will, you can take more damage later, but doesn't it actually affect your ability to fire and fight? Because you're just soaking it as a robot. Yes. You're yeah, not, yeah. You're, not, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not. You're not. You're not stunned by it. Yeah. This is this is like partial damage or whatever. Right. So you so you make an attack roll, and if you hit, you either give out a pain or a fatigue. The defender then tries to dodge. Although we had to look at the robots, They're and it doesn't like they have a dodge. No, it's, <laughs> so, it's not so in their programming. Pretty <laughs> that's pretty quick. 
You then make a damage roll, which is based upon... So a weapon or a, a shoot or your chance to hit is based upon sh the, tar the fire's skill, mostly. And you just need one of these... One and of the any, hits. Yeah, any number Counts of dashes. Any hit. one hit means you've hit. And it right. doesn't matter if you get loads more. But then the damage is based upon the power of the weapon. Yes. Yeah? So you could, you then compare your... You then roll the number of dice equal to the power of your weapon and a few other modifiers. And the defender tries to reduce them based upon its, its defense stat. And then you look at a table in terms of doing damage. Because these are robots, not people. Yes. So they can take a lot more of a beating. And that, that kind of, like, what was the effect you might... So it's a little bit like it is in the others where you roll to see if it's a wound what or was a it? kill. Oil, or a... Oiling, yeah, it was like leak, leakage, leakage. Or something. It was like leakage, you, you, yeah, you've and sprung a hole in the, in the yeah. oil was pouring out. The Absolutely, because clearly out. robots would run on like diesel. Completely, like one hundred percent. No matter where you um, shoot, the oil's going to come out. What, were, the, what were those results? I mean, because they were close combat. Uh, yeah, target gains a leak. Target gains two leaks. <laughs> we got the robot result versus the floppy result. I love the floppies. <laughs> but I love that it's from the robot's perspective. Yeah, very much. Is is the thing I, I like about that. So they've made some. They've adapted it. It's not just Judge Dread with different stats. They work a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I and I like that. I don't know how the interactivity between these systems is because they're all a little bit different yeah and i'm not sure they all have the same stat block they may no, i'm not do. familiar enough to know i don't unfortunately i don't sorry, remember guys, but, um, you know you've enough. got just to let you know there's a movement stat a shoot stat a fight stat a dodge stat your overall sort of toughness stat mm. and then i'm i'm gonna assume this, this is like a size stat so maybe that comes into play maybe i mean uh, there is a key in like the first silhouette. few pages but there's only six stats to really consider oh no that's cool oh that's his cool so okay yes his head how cool is he uh, that's the number you have to you have to beat to do something else that does that matter. That feels more like a yeah, psychological aspect. That might be the pin for humans. Yes. But it'll come in in relation to the it's cards as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the cards are going to interact with you in different True. ways. We haven't considered um, those either. We haven't considered those. So, uh, just have a look at a couple of cards. Play after inflicting a leak or injury in close combat. The target model immediately takes enough additional leaks or injuries to be downed. That's quite powerful. That's quite powerful. <laughs> Ace, of the Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Collision avoidance sensors. Playing a character when they are hit by a ranged attack. That character gains plus two evade and the gunfire skill for the render and activation. So that was you saying that um, robots don't get to evade. Naturally, no. They, they, they didn't seem to have a stat, but there's a card that can give them a stat for that for the turn. Collision avoidance sensors. Collision mate. avoidance it's in, it's sensors. in the programming now. It's in there. Summarise anyway. So we're going to stop waffling now because we kind of told you everything we know. We'll and things try that we don't stop know. waffling. Yeah. We've done our best. In terms of what I think of it, I, I think it's, I think it's interesting. I don't know anything about them, and I want to know more about them now. I've, I, they seem like an interesting cartoon. Well, that's a good thing, right? And that's yeah. a good. That sounds like a good start set if it makes you want to know more. Yeah, and and um, I love the fact that it includes some scenery. You seem to have all of the bits you need. I'm still not completely sold on Sirecast, but I suspect that in metal, these I wouldn't be happy with these miniatures. Yeah, but we are jaded old gamers that we, have, we are. have been we privileged resistant to many. To new. Yeah, many. We don't like new. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the fact that these are like two piece miniatures that couldn't be done any other way. Uh, no, for and the, I think for I think metal you'd never get them glued to glue to no, a base no. or anything like that. They'd be they kind of getting very big for that. Uh, so I, I like what we got here. I like what, I like what we're seeing. I like it a lot. Um, just like with everything on the channel, you're probably not going to see it for a while because we have to build it all and paint it all and build this in before we can even sh make one video. That's assume, assuming we don't forget about it with yeah. our age. And, then, yeah. and there's just a big list of other things that you want to see. Check previous um, videos. Yeah, absolutely. But I think if you want to get into this, I think it's all right. See, I mean, look, I mean, you've got all the bits you've got there. It's mm. pretty comp comprehensive. I can't yeah. even say the word as a starter set. Yeah. You've got the tokens, you've got the rules, a good rule set. 
um, I say good rule set in the sense that it has an index. And it's else. not just the same rule set spat out again no, with a different cover. No, it's got enough changes They've to make it made the different. changes to fit the robot theme. That, and you don't always expect that, because they didn't have to do it. Just give them no, an extra hit point. You could just yeah. regurgitate. Yeah, absolutely. So there's one thing that is missing in terms of being comprehensive, which is a bit of a... Bit of a personal thing for oh, me, and I always mention it. What are we what, saying? Like, what have we not got here, John? Well, I every know, good starter set. I don't know have. how. I don't know. Beginner set. Uh, it hasn't got a play mat. It hasn't got a play mat. It also hasn't got any. Even if it is a throwaway option, has it got a throwaway. Hasn't ruler? got any rulers. Yeah. Or it might have hidden it in the book might somewhere. Have to, like, a cut out one in the book that we don't know about, but it doesn't have a play mat, and I just feel a three foot square. Bit of sandy, glossy paper. That's all you need. But in saying that, this is not an. This is a very. This niche is a starter set, but market. it's not for entry level gamers. Yeah. This is for grognards. Yeah. <laughs> like, grognards. That's even a good word. we're a bit on the young side to be like, I've been that into 2000 True. AD. True. It kind of its glory days are slightly behind. But that us. doesn't mean Nana's going to pop into you know Warlord Games and be like, I need this kit for my son, and she Absolutely. picks out that. Yeah. So, all right, guys. I hope fun. this review was useful to you. I'm really pleased with with this product. If you like the ABC Warriors, good effort. You understand that what they've been doing with Rebellion license. I don't think you'd be disappointed. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description. But a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.